Hey guys, welcome to episode number 60 of Latin Vegan, and I'm your host, fitness and lifestyle coach, Roger. For over two decades, I've been living and breathing this lifestyle, and I love talking about veganism from all angles. As many of you guys know, I started this journey back in 2002 in my hometown in Panama. Small land, but big and hard, right back in Central America. Then the word vegan in the early 2000s was not even a word. Like a lot of people didn't even know what vegan was. And there was tons of vegetarian. And back in those days, they used to eat fish. So today, I want to share and talk to y'all about why vegans do not eat fish. So let's go. Latinoyvegano.com I could just tell y'all to watch the experience for this one. I feel like the film is so complete that the topic of eating fish should not be non-existent. However, I still want to give you guys my two cents when it comes to fish. For many years, I feel like fish has been seen as one of the healthiest options for those that want to reduce the consumption of meat. At the same time, they don't even consider fish as animals. But then we complete are destroying our ecosystem with this one when we kill fish or when we eat fish. From recreational fishing to fishing farming. I always wonder why people eat fish. Here are some of the reasons I have found that makes some people eat fish for a long period of time. Good source of omega-3 and fatty acids seems to be one of the main reasons why people eat fish. Lean protein source, I hear that a lot. Oh, uh, when you eat fish, it's a good uh, source of protein. Uh, culture and importance, a lot of people from the culture, fish is part of their diet. Uh, vitamin D, I hear a lot about vitamin D and fish as well, and health benefit like asthma, Alzheimer's. They say by eating fish, you reduce the possibility of getting asthma or Alzheimer. So this is one of the reasons why I have seen or heard or read that people gravitate towards fish. Even if all these things are actually true, I will still won't eat fish, in my opinion. And that's the same reason why I won't eat a cow or a pig. Now, just like some studies claim to say that fish is good for you, there are several studies that say the, the contrary. Uh, that they say that fish isn't really that good. One thing I noticed a while ago, doing some research for this episode, is the industry behind all these studies and how the information is manipulated. I will let you all do some research on that when it comes to this, but here are a few things you probably didn't know about fish and why it's not even healthy as they say it is. I got this one from my website and a few of the reasons why fish aren't as good as your thoughts they are. Before I mention some of the reasons why I don't think fish is healthy, I also would like to point out that um, a lot of people don't consider fish even animal. All right, let me dive in uh, straight into some of the reasons why um, fish is not even good for you. And we can start with mercury. Uh, yes, a lot of the waters are contaminated. There's a lot of pollution when it comes to, um, there's a lot of in industries, factories, and all this mercury is being displayed or being exposed. And all that mercury goes into the waters and get, 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 Guess where the fish live? They live in the water, so they're exposed to all this mercury. So when you're eating fish, you're eating high tons of mercury in your system, which is, at the end, not really good for you. You can find more chemicals in fish than omega-3 fatty acid like they advertise. It's a similar to what they all tell about calcium in, in milk. It's a algae oil. It's a great source of DH, DHA and EPA omega-3s, and it's often an ingredient in fast fish, which is a plant-based version of fish. Saturated fat. If you're eating fish for the omega-3 because you want a healthier heart, you are doing your body more harm than good. Between 15 to 30% of the fat in fish is saturated fat, which makes our liver produce more arteries clogging cholesterol. Not exactly what seafood eaters need, since 6 ounces of shrimp, for instance, pack about 322 milligrams of cholesterol so it's, it's unbelievable how much um saturated fat you can find in fish and people when they eat especially when they eat shrimp they just don't eat one they eat tons of them so imagine the amount of cholesterol they put into your body 
pollution and dirty waters. It goes back to uh, the mercury. Uh, it goes back to the mercury. Pollution and dirty water. This actually tied us a little bit with the mercury part of it. With the majority, if not all of our seas are polluted. In some type of way, actually the movie Suspiracy Pictures this very well. How not just plastic, it goes beyond that. All the fishing nets and hooks and whatever else is dropped into the ocean, lakes or water, those things are consumed by fishes and therefore eat that when you time to eat the fish so you consuming the same thing they're consuming so if the waters are polluted you're gonna be consuming some of that pollution as well when you consume the fish it's like you literally like filtering your food as you put it in those terms because it's not even food but you're filtering all this disease to you because you everything that the fish is eating you're eating it too antibiotics and pesticide farmers especially for salmon are very common since they are formed with antibiotics and pesticides used to kill any bacteria. So all these bacteria, all these pesticides that they're using are consumed by the fish as well. So when you eat them, you're consuming these pesticides and uh, antibiotics, which is not really good for your body as well. Ethical. Well, fish are sentient beings that they suffer. So why hurt them? And this is one of the reasons why also I brought this into conversation because a lot of people don't consider fish or animals in they are. They are living creatures. They're sentient beings. They have feelings. And we don't deserve to be killing them. That's the reason why. Also, um, you, should, you shouldn't be eating fish. Uh, first of all, we want the number one reason why you shouldn't be eating fish. Now, do vegans eat fish? The fact of the matter is that ethical vegans and vegans in general and some plant-based eaters in general don't eat fish. Vegans respect sentient beings and marine life as part of the group. Besides, no true health factor you can find from eating fish. There's tons of food on the plant kingdom that will give you all the nutrients you need. We as vegans don't see any need or benefit of eating fish or any sort of sea life by any means. Here's a f where I suggest watching conspiracy and get a wider understanding of what raping you see from his species are doing to our ecosystem. This is a good segue for the conspiracy documentary, which talks about this entire totality about the marine life and how it's been affecting our planet and our health as well. So it touches us from all different angles. So I highly suggest watching this movie, which is exposed a lot of this industry and the benefit of not eating um, fish and what is it causing to our planet, what is it causing to our ecosystem, what is it causing to our our life in general. I always wonder who gives permission to human to take others' life and use it. Meaning, how can you take a fish out from his home or his habitat without asking them, kill them, sell them, and do do it again? Do you even pay the family part of the profit when you s sell a fish? No, right? I wonder how would you feel if we do this to some of your family members? Or including you so that's one of the things that I never understood how can people just take stuff out of the water with no permission you get a license to be, go fishing but who gives the government the permission to go um, take fish out of the water and I guess one of the reasons why here they you gotta get a license it's kind of to regulate fishing and not um, completely reduce the production of fishes in the water but at the same time like if you think about it, you taking away, it's like you taking property of something that doesn't belong to you. What they say is that they own the water. Therefore, you own the water, you own everything that's inside. But there's this life inside that water. So it's people living in that. Well, it's not people, but it's animals living inside that water. So what property do you get? What, how can they, what is they want a boat or do they want to have opinion? They can because just because they're not the same species, they can't communicate. They've been bullied out. If you see, you're a sea lover and you wonder what can you do uh, to quit seafood, I would suggest the following. So I wanna give you guys a few tips and things that you can do to kind of reduce your consumption of fish and then eliminate it completely from your diet. And yeah, benefit from a healthier life without the, the, the need of be killing any sentient being. 
So one of the first things I recommend is educate yourself about this topic. This can be with reading books, blog, documentaries, uh, by getting a mentor, or any of those things. Yeah, that would be my first advice. My second advice is start small and commit to it. So basically, if you wanna if you wanna stop eating fish, or you start wanna um, adopt a more plant based diet, just commit to it and start small. Maybe start one meal, maybe start two meal, maybe start uh, three or four times a week, etc. So start small and then commit yourself. Do a few days without it, then go a week without it, and keep improving until you not you don't need it anymore. It's not missed anymore, or you don't crave it that bad, or you don't crave it, you don't want to have it. Now, number third is find alternatives that are really equally or better in taste than the one you're getting. So what I mean with this is there's tons of alternatives out there in the market. You can do a Google search, or you can do just go to your local uh, organic store, and you can find all kind of alternative products that you can use to uh, your consumption. Learn how to make your favorite dishes using plant-based ingredients. Tons of recipes out there. Now, it's so easy to get this recipe since we have access to the internet. Celebrate your progress. Now, number five is to celebrate your progress and enjoy the new journey. Anything that you got going on and a big change in your life, enjoy that journey. Enjoy. Uh, celebrate it. Make sure that um, you reward yourself. Don't abuse it though. Don't be uh, don't be don't be mean about it. But at least give you the opportunity to enjoy some of the things that you're doing. One of those things is taking the lead to uh, reducing the consumption of, of meat and at the same time reducing the consumption of seafood and so you can focus on more plant-based lifestyle. Okay, guys. So I, I hope you can find these tips a little bit um, helpful for those that want to make the transition into eating less um, seafood and focus more on a plant-based, uh, healthy plant-based diet. And I this I hope these tips kind of help you to the process. So let me recap those those um, five steps. So you want to educate yourself. You want to have knowledge as far as what's good and what's the benefit of stop eating fish, and the need that you, that you can use or so the approach that you can use to take those steps. Then we have to start small and commit to that. So you definitely want to start small. Maybe you eating um, seafood. Uh, four times a month or three times or uh, three times a week or whatever the amount of time you're doing it then you can just reduce maybe start with two then maybe start with one and so on and so forth so reduce and then make sure you commit to it so constantly you start making those changes um i would say uh, as a bonus to add a why why do you want to make that change i think always when you have a strong why it helps you with a lot of, it lets you to kind of push through uh, and mitigate a lot of the the issues and the problems that you might encounter. For example, I remember when I started, I have a strong why, and then that why has been pushing me to this lifestyle for the rest of my life. So I think having a strong why also make a big deal, make a big sense in, in these tips. Uh, find alternatives that are equally as good. So there's a lot of alternatives. There's brands like Gardein. Ocean Hunger Food and Good Cash are a couple of options or a couple of brands out there. Find the ones that you can in your area, in your country, and then just just use those alternatives in the meantime. But I know Garden is one of the most pre famous ones, the most common ones around. So you can try that one too to see if you find any product you like and you enjoy those products. Uh, learn how to make your own favorite meals. So it's important that you learn how to cook and make your favorite meals because that um that creates it creates like a more a, a very commodity now you're making your own meals now you can share with your family now you find the perfect flavor and so on. so that's another option create your own family create your own food create your own camaraderie when you're creating this all these plates and uh, last but not least i have celebrate your progress remember then not to just um beat yourself when situations are not working the way it's supposed to work but also to embracing that you have gained some knowledge, something different. You now know more than you knew before, and that's allowing you to um, to perform on a higher level now. So celebrate your progress and enjoy your journey like like a, like a champ, as I like to call it that way. So hey guys, so I appreciate the time 
So this, I just wanted to make this quick uh, podcast talking about uh, if do vegan eat fish? The answer is no. And I explained to you guys previously why we don't eat fish and some of the options that you can use, hopefully, to um, that allow me to stop any of the cravings or any of the um, desires to going back to the fish. Not much in my case because my wife is strong, but I don't know if yours that's the case in your in your case. So if that's the case, then that way you can definitely utilize some of this tip and how you find them um, very uh, very good. Suspiracy is the way to go. The documentary has all the information and everything you need. It's going to be a very complete documentary. And once you find find the documentary, uh, it's actually on Netflix, and watch it, you're going to have an understanding um, more clearly of what this whole industry is doing to you and is doing to you um, to the planet as well. So hope these tips help you all uh, to transition. Uh, at the same time, I was able to answer this common question. If you guys ever need a health transitioning to a plant-based diet or veganism in cell, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, I help people not only that that a plant-based diet, but also I help people in the fitness uh, journey so I, they can they can live the best life as possible, not only in the inside but also on the outside. So I just wanted to make this quick uh, episode so I can talk about these common questions, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much, love. Peace, be good. Oh, please don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and to any of those our social medias. Don't forget to leave your comments and just review and podcast. That way, every time people search for uh, Latin, be- or Latino Vegano, or anything related to veganism, our podcast shows up on the first search so we can reach to more people and hear more people. So thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful day, and look, I love you guys. Gracias por escuchar Latino y Vegano. Un show donde se habla todo lo relacionado sobre el veganismo entre la comunidad latina. No olviden suscribirse a este podcast, seguirnos en Instagram, Facebook, YouTube y a visitarnos en latinoyvegano.com.